camera goes off after half an hour. Uh, I was just discussing this with God, and uh, we're probably going to shorten it up, but hopefully this will give people the the impetus to go look at the index, go look at the addendum, uh, and get more familiar with all these videos of mine, because I know they're hard to keep up with. Anyway, continuing that verse, uh, 63 verses 9 and 10. But they grieved his Holy Spirit. Now, an inanimate object cannot be grieved. How can you not believe that his Holy Spirit is a person? He's grieved because the Israelites disobeyed God. You know, these are the things he wants straightened out. And all rabbis are going to say this mess till they get straightened out. And I have to be recognized. If you don't recognize Elijah, utter destruction comes to Israel someday. He says he's going to do it, but it, it, what he means is his creation is going to do it. We have to build the temple. That's what keeps Israel safe forever. He says that you'll never be dispersed, defeated and dispersed again. When he puts his sanctuary back amongst them. Which does not have to be on the Temple Mount, by the way. It's got to be on Mount Zion. It's got to be in Jerusalem. <clears throat> but, you know, one, he tells me it's not big enough for what I want. And uh, he says it's kind of tainted. It's had Islam up there too long. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it doesn't mean you, you, you know, you have to move to the, the Wailing Wall or anything. But... Uh, because that's one of the biggest obstacles of, of rebuilding this temple. I mean, a lot of people say, well, why don't we work out a deal with the Muslims and, and they can have the Golden Dome and uh, we'll, we'll have our um, God's temple. You know, that's never going to work. It's never going to work. But, and, and, who purchased the temple not for God in repentance for failing a test? King David. Well, who am I? Well, I'm a twig of the shoot from the stump of Jesse. I'm a twig. You know, I'm sure there's no comparison to who David was and who I am at this point, but I'm on the ancestral tree. Just a twig. But, if you know, and the, you know, I'm sure David didn't use his own pocket money. He used kingdom money. I know people have been raising money to have it built. All i got to do is appoint me as agent, attorney, in fact, or... You know, there's all kinds of legal ways to do it. Uh, I once was a lawyer before God had me quit <laughs> and go into poverty. Uh, yeah, again, you'll have a descendant of David by it, must you? You know, in name only. It wouldn't be mine, uh, but it'd be for the people. Or somehow, there's all kinds of ways to do things like this in the law. But that's good to know because... Like I said, that's a big obstacle. Well, you know, what are we going to, we'll have to go to war uh, again because we had taken it back from them and then we let Jordan uh, run the show. Okay, a spirit entered into Ezekiel. Ezekiel says, this is another example of God being in his spirit. And his spirit is in God. Ezekiel said, this is in quotes, this is verses, uh, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. And he said to me, that would be God, and he said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet that I may speak to you. As he spoke to me, a spirit entered me, alighted upon and entered him, and set me upon my feet, and I could hear what was being spoken to me. God speaking, he's, he's telling you right here, God speaking, but until the Spirit entered me, I could not hear him. He's speaking from within him. Now, he can make it seem like he's talking to you from over here, and that's usually how we do. But it can also be, uh, you know, to your mind, as though he's within you. There's other forms of communication. I mentioned he can put information into you without speaking a word. Uh, the Holy Spirit talks a lot. He's fun to listen to. Yeah, he's an angel. He's fun. He's my best friend. 
uh, God doesn't talk as much. He'll talk when he's preparing me to be a prophet in his fire refinement. We've had a lot of disagreements. Which, by the way, I have lost every single one of them. There's no winning. You can't, you, you, you can argue with God. I know the Jewish people say, well, Abraham argued with him, this and that. Uh, you know, go ahead. But if you ever for a moment think you're going to win, and he's right there with you, <laughs> you're about to be in a world of pain. And he'll tell you just what he told me. First lesson, your pain, Keith, means nothing to me. I have a place I'm taking you to be the prophet I want you to be. And it requires pain and suffering. So you, <laughs> I just say, okay. Because that's what you do with God. say, okay. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing you can do. He's God. He's just thankful that he's got a sense of humor and that when he's not changing you, uh, he's so much fun to be with. And of course the spirit. But there it is right there. He can't, he's not, he's not hearing God until the spirit enters him and God is in his spirit. And that's what happens to Moshe. And you become a man of divine beings. Um, okay, I don't want this to go too long. Oh, you know, God is still one. Remember, he, he created this angel. And there's actually verses that that make that a point. And I'll, I'll go through that one. The Spirit of God, here's another example, he's got to be a person. The Spirit of God used a spirit to bring Ezekiel in addition to the exiled community in Chaldea. And God stood by on a hill. In other words, God is with Ezekiel. And it says he ascended from Jerusalem and descended on a hill east of Jerusalem. And then it says the Spirit of God took Ezekiel on a vision. It's showing the separation of the two. You know, they're, they're always together, but, but they, it, it, there is a separation to it. You know, here's the presence of God. It's his mind. It's elements of the unseen we can't see. Okay? Here's the Spirit of God. Angelic person with a soul and a spirit and who is a person and his body is spirit. They're like clouds and they just kind of float together. But they're still separate. And, and today, my spirit is within that cloud. If I'm in a room, their presence fills that room. And it would surround everybody in the audience. It would be all, you know, completely surrounding your body. The difference with me, it doesn't surround my body. It goes through me. I have become a part of those those two clouds. My little bitty spiritual cloud is, you know, it goes through me. And I can feel his power go through me too, by the way. These, the things he can do with my body are, well, I'm still learning 13 years later. It, it can be very spooky sometimes. So the Spirit of God used the Spirit to bring Ezekiel in the vision. And God stood by on the hill. And of course, the only power in heaven is God. The Holy Spirit has no power. There's no angel with power. He, he, God says, I'm not giving anybody my power. He says, and, and frankly, it's not something that, I mean, I've had to create a God. Because it's my will. I will things to be. And I have absolute knowledge on how things should come together to create our universe, for instance. The earth, to bring water to it, to gather water from, the, uh, from, from outer space. There's H2O in outer space. That's where all our water came from. He drew it from the ends of the universe. So, uh, and there's another verse where the Spirit of God goes to Ezekiel and says, speak, Ezekiel. So it's a person. And Judaism, just, they got to get that right. One, <laughs> I have a person here who'd like to be recognized. He's, he's called the angel of God's presence, the Holy Spirit. And God wants him recognized. And he's a, he's a great person. I can tell you all about his personality and how much fun we have and how much he makes me laugh. 
God can have me on the verge of tears begging for death. And I swear the little guy can make me laugh. It's too funny. Okay. You know, this gets deeper and deeper. Now I'm, on, I'm only on chapter 6. It's 50. <laughs> I hope this, what I'm going to do is stop. That's what I was talking to God about when I had to re-adjust uh, my camera. I hope that gives people an idea of how important it is that these books be read. And uh, I, haven't, I haven't seen anybody from Israel go to my WordPress site. Now, I can't tell on YouTube if anybody from Israel is listening to these videos. I can't account for about half my countries watching half. Yeah, half. It, it's just messed up. It just shows the USA, Canada, Germany, <laughs> Russia was zero views. I don't know what that is, but Israel doesn't show up on YouTube. But they got to be out there. They can't possibly have not heard about this. At least some. And like I said, I can account for, you know, with America, that's about 44%. But everybody else together is only about 2% that I just mentioned. So I'm missing over 50% of the countries that are viewing my videos. I don't know who they are. And I, it's just some kind of glitch. But I'm assuming Israel knows. But on my WordPress site, where the books are written, I can tell uh, the, all the countries that any views come from. And it's imperative that these get published. And, you know, basically, I think the idea is, you know, I need a strong... Uh, uh, Acknowledgement from a rabbi of all people, <laughs> right? I reckon they dismiss them, but if they don't want to be, see, God's, he's basically putting them in a headlock. You do what he says, or you don't go to heaven, period. And that's all of you. So, you know, there's more written on this and make that a lot clearer, and it's on my videos. But he did. He, he says, I'm not mad at all rabbis, but I want Judaism changed, and I know how you gotta, what I have to do to get these people to listen to my prophet. He says, I never listen to my prophet. But, you know, I have so much information, it's ridiculous. I have a lot of information. I've written two books for God. What did, what did Moses do? He wrote the Torah. It was dictated to him. The Orthodox Jews believe that, and they're right. And he dictated these to me. It was at his command and direction. I, I felt like I was pretty involved in it. But um, they got the two covenants. And we need the Jewish people to be a holy seed. And if you read Zechariah, chapter 1, where Rashi says, we can't tell what, he's, what, what, what this is about. We can't tell. Well, I can tell. Go find my video on it or read it. It's in the book. Uh, and it... it it, it uh, has to do with this day of the Lord at the same time. I put it all together. And, uh, you know, Rashi couldn't. Nobody else had been able to. Rashi says, we got to wait for the teacher of righteousness. This is the same fellow who is attributed with uh, the idea, Isaiah 53 is the people of Israel. He's saying, we got to wait on the teacher of righteousness. Well, they, he's not saying we got to wait on the Jewish people. So somewhere along the line, he changed his mind. Um, he's known for inconsistencies, I understand. But if you look at my video, you'll learn a lot. And you'll see why the importance of getting these covenants, because the covenant of sin forgiveness, uh, Syrian, Babylon, the exiles were forgiven uh, in the writings of Isaiah, the Roman dispersal, Jeremiah. 31. But that was in Isaiah, but nobody knew. Because you can see in Ezra and Nehemiah, all 13 tribes returned, by the way. But you can't read those two books and not know that. But um, they were still sinning. There was all kinds of problems, you know. Um, but it, had they known they were sin-free, I think things had gone a lot easier. Because if you, again, if 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 you know God has cleared your slate, doesn't remember anything you ever did wrong, and you can see God is acting in the world through his prophet, 
you are likely to come back to observant Judaism and stay sin free. You know, any boo-boo you have, any uh, uh, evil inclination that gets by you, you know, you, you got Yom Kippur. And he'll be, he'll be more forgiving of that. But we got, there's going to be so many people who never even hear of it. You know, there's got to be a lot of word of mouth, but it all starts with publishing the books. And uh, if there's a rabbi out there with, with it's got a pretty powerful name who wants to read it, get with me, learn who I am. Uh, you can pretty much see my personality on these tapes, but uh, and endorse my book to a publisher, a Jewish publisher, and tell them, yes, yes, this attacks Judaism, but the Jewish people have to hear it. They have to hear it. And somebody with some clout. And they'll go into the scroll of remembrance. Undismissed. And now if all the right people, people like Toby a singer preaching that Isaiah 53 uh, is Israel, read his commentary. I've got it on video. You, you read how he puts Israel in there and you'll just shake your head and say it's, that's an absurdity. It's pure foolishness. <laughs> I had other words for it. Jews for Judaism, they got a whole different argument. And it's just as far out there. You know, it's just ridiculous. And I think they know. I think they know how stupid it is. And that makes them liars. Makes them liars. Teaching the medicine they ain't care. This, they got no backup for that. Rambam. <laughs> Rambam's got all kinds of his own problems. He'd he fit in with those two. That, those two groups just fine. Two chapters on King Moshiach and his dynasty <laughs> and his kingdom. God knew Israel was going to be a democratic country. Anyway, so, yeah, Jeremiah writes for the Roman dispersal. And what does he say in 31? When the desolate lands bloom again and the whole city is restored. That's not for the Assyrian Babylon exile. They couldn't even go into the northern kingdom. Gentiles were living there. Yeah, it's for the dispersal. Well, they had. They came back. That's all. The, you know, where's God? Where's God? And God's like, y'all come back, I'll come back. So that's where we're at. Lands bloom again. Cities restored. Jerusalem rebuilt. And he says, you'll never be dispersed and defeated again. And I'm going to make a new covenant with you. When you see a new covenant, you say, well, there's only two. One comes with Moshiach, friendship. Where's the other one? Malachi 3. The angel of the covenant that you desire is already on the way. And that's really interesting too. What does that mean, already on the way? But that's the angel of the new covenant, the angel of his presence, the Holy Spirit, the angel of the Lord. So you go from Jeremiah to the Malachi 3, which is where God announces the day of the Lord. That's how you know it's here. And what does he say in the first verse? I'm sending my messenger to clear the way. That's Elijah which means clear the way to get the temple built because he says, because I'm going to return to my temple. And Judaism, I mean, it has nothing to do with the Messianic era. It's like, that. I don't even know if rabbis read Malachi or Malachi 3. You sure can't tell. You sure can't tell. The Messianic era is nothing but a lie. It's just made up stuff. You can't find it in the scripture. And particularly if you understand Scripture was written for antiquity in the Middle Ages first, and then for the common era, the era, uh, ages of medicine, science, information, and now the internet. You got to know how to. You got to know how to read it, and they don't. Um, so that's where they're at. Again, I need people to read it. I need it to get around. But uh, more importantly, if you just look at the index and this summary that I just started into, it'll give you a better handle on all these videos I'm, I'm putting out there. Again, it's only about 45. We just keep redoing them. Different titles, a little cleanup here and there. But the video itself remains the same. And I know, you know, you, you see it under one title, you, you go, oh, I want to watch that. And then you see a different time, you see it, and you turn it on, and then you go, hey, hey, I've seen this. What are you doing? What's going on? 
Well, first of all, I'm doing what I'm told to do <laughs> from God himself. So he said, that's what we got to do. We're too small. And my audience is the Jewish people. I absolutely know <laughs> how much I offend the Christians because I lay it on. And boy, I'm not done by any stretch of the imagination. 53 and 11. He can't be them. He's a myth and a liar. No question about it. He changed the prophecy of Zechariah from riding an ass into Jerusalem and being executed by the Gentiles to snow with his head. And he says, all the prophets say to me. Nobody said that of him. You can find it one place about an ass being ridden into Jerusalem by the Messiah, the anointed one. And what does he do when he gets there? He defeats Rome. If it was back then, he just faced the enemy. He makes the Middle East lay down and becomes ruler over everything. He changed it. He absolutely lied. Except he's a myth. The person who absolutely lied is the person who wrote that gospel. They knew better than that. That it didn't fit the Jesus story that was going on a hundred years before his birth. Because it's, it's based on the Essenes, the writers of the Dead Sea Scrolls, prolific writers and commentators. Their founder is named the Teacher of Righteousness. That's Isaiah 53. They had their own gate to Jerusalem. You think if they heard about some man working miracles like Jesus did, saying he was the teacher of righteousness, you think they wouldn't have written about him? You think they wouldn't have gone out and had a little talk with him? Nothing. You don't see his name for 40 more years when Jerusalem's being destroyed by Rome. I think some rabbis decided, hey, we got to take that Jesus story that Gentiles love to hear at the gate and give us money. And his friend would have said, he said, you, you can't put that story with the Hebrew Bible. It's ridiculous. And his friend would have said, hey, nobody reads. Nobody can read. Nobody has these scrolls. Nobody can check it. It's just lie wherever we need to. But it's a great story. That's what they did. And then 53 is like a snare. God put all those words in there. Wounded for our sins. Crushed. Bruised. Chastised. For, you know, things we did, all this vicarious statements that he's bearing it, vicarious, 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 and it turns out, no, no, that's just what I got to do to my prophet. That's, these are the things I got to do to my man of Isaiah 53 to get him right. I got to break his will. I got I to gotta drain his emotions from him. You know, it's like, it's like a, a sergeant training a cadet for the Marines. You know, just beat him down. Sleep deprivation, everything. God knows every trick in the book. That's, that's what it is. So it's kind of like a snare. Cause, because he needed the Gentiles to have religion. He needed them to. And he knew what they were going to do uh, with Leviticus. Uh, just like Toby was saying, Toby went Christian. Um, he knew. But you know, we don't have any Jews if there wasn't in America. You know, most people would speculate that Germany would have won the war and uh, still be finding them here and there, but they, they wouldn't be the great people they are today. And they wouldn't have their own state. So he had to do it. And uh, But he also knew he was going to come crush Christianity on the day of the Lord, and he's going to use me, a righteous servant, Elijah, Moshiach, and a prophet like Moses to do it. Now, that's a pretty powerful prophet if you think about it. But I'm really no different from them. They were all men and divine beings. And you can find it. It's in the Torah. David was. De Moses definitely was. And uh, it's in my videos. You can find it. Elijah, definitely. So that they're all righteous servants. They were all divine, men and divine beings. Uh, and that's what I am. And God just tells me what to do, and I do it. I don't do anything on my own. I have no self-will. I'm the only human being on this planet. Man is defined as, as, as uh, having self-will, and animals don't. I don't have self-will. God provides my self-will, my will.
because it is this. So, um, okay, that, that's going to wrap this up. I, I must be at 45 minutes or better. And um, they get too long, but I, I can't go through the whole thing. And, and he said, I knew you wouldn't be able to. It's too long. But we're going to give them enough. We'll, we'll get a lot of people interested in reading at least some of the book. And it will put the videos in a better context, understanding there's only so many of them uh, and what it's all about. It's about the day of the Lord. It's about how do you recognize the man of Isaiah 53. Well, I fit the verses, and I got a book to back that up. But it's this knowledge. It's these books that tell you. It's just like the Israelites could have gone to Moses and said, Moses, how do we know God's talking to you? And they did. Some did. You know what Moses would have done if he was finished with it? He would have handed him the scroll of Leviticus and, say, and just look at him and say, you think I came up with that by myself? God told me what to write down. Look at all these God's laws. I, I didn't just figure this stuff out. I grew up in Egypt. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, he wrote the Torah, but that's his proof here. Here's the first five scrolls of the Bible. Um... Well, at that time, it would have been the only five scrolls. And that's the talk. Well, I'm telling you the same thing. This is scripture. God told me to write it. I'm certainly not a person capable of. I, I was a lawyer, but I wasn't, I wasn't an intellectual. I wasn't so, it, it was hard for me to get through law school. I had to study night and day. It's not, you know, I'm a smart guy, but I'm just not super intelligent. I can't figure out what no sages and rabbis could figure out before me. I mean, I become the smartest religious Jew of all time. It's not possible. That's the answer. And if it's not possible, people, what is it? It's a miracle. Who performs miracles? God and God alone. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoy it.